All right, had to go and change the uh, battery on on the um, on the camera. So, if you remember where we were at, well, because I'm gonna splice all this, you shouldn't even know I'm gone. Anyway, there's the uh, LED ready to be tinned. I'm gonna clean up the soldering iron, apply a bit of solder to it. Throw it into the flux, a little bit more solder, then into my cleaning area. Okay, now, all I'm going to do to tin this is get a little bit of solder on my soldering iron. And just touch it to the base. That's it. Now, in order to uh, solder this on, going to get my helping hand back in again. So protect that. Helping hand comes in, goes like that. And that area is nicely presented for soldering. And grab these guys. So these are um, pair of tweezers that will hold everything in place. Remember, black, black towards me. Okay, so these tweezers do a couple of things. First off, they're nice, big, heavy. They act as a heat sink a certain amount. Okay, so that protects the LED. Uh, secondly, yeah, they're, they help steady my hand, which isn't the steadiest thing. So now let's give this a try. Position it the way I want it pretty much. Get my soldering iron. Okay, so what I was doing there is putting some downward pressure on it to make sure that it was flush with the board. Look at that, that looks okay. So now the next step is we'll pull this out of here. Move that aside. Do a little bit closer inspection. Yeah, I like it. Everything looks good there. Yep. And then I want to bend this to be the same bend as in this guy. So we line these two up. Again, based upon here and here where it's going to go into that little clip. Look at it sideways, see where the bend is. Figure I'm going to do a bend in the same spot, and it's just a little, not much. And then compare these two and see what they look like. Line them up, do the comparison. Yeah, you can maybe see that that bend between those two is really close which is you want it close doesn't have to be dead on or anything like that now the other thing I know from past experience is when I slide this crew compartment on it's going to slide right in all the way so that this area butts up against here what that means is these capacitor wires sticking out front uh, can't. They have to stick inside or to the back. So I need to do a little bit more soldering to fix that. So we'll bring back in helping hand buddy here. And we will just grab this with our fingers.
And all I want to do is move this so it's pointing more in. So melt it first. Grab it the way I want it. There, that's good. Oh, the other one. Just touch it to desolder it. It's going to head back. Now I'm going to try this with my other hand. We'll see how good a job I do. Not, I'm, I'm right handed, so I don't know. Be interesting. Ooh, seems like a good idea though. Okay, now take this out, inspect it a bit closer. Yep, does everything that I want need it to. Okay, so we're good on that. Move these guys out of the way because I don't need them right now. And we'll turn the soldering iron off. I don't need it yet. Uh, I have a drink of my mocha. I got tired of paying Starbucks uh, by the time I get a six bucks. I'm in Canada. Uh, so I now make my own. I get. Uh, it's a gigantic mug, you can see. It holds like, I don't know how much would be the equivalent of a big Starbucks. But anyway, I uh, take uh, a cup of chocolate milk, a cup of skim milk, mix them together, put them in the microwave for three minutes. I have an espresso, take two shots, pour it all together, and uh, I quite like it. It's probably not the best thing for me, but my age, nothing is. So, All right, so we're back to the frame buddy here. And, yeah, that sticks to it. Okay, so let me see. Anything else that I'm forgetting to do? Can't think of anything. I think we're good now. Um, this here, the um, fuel tank can go on at any time. I'm going to put it on now. And there's only one way. Again, there's a bar. There's a rectangle cut out here, and there's a bar right there. So it only fits on one way. The advantage, I think, of putting it on here... This will help to hold the motor clips in. I don't know whether that's true or not, but I often forget to put it on, so I figure let's do it now and then I won't forget later. Okay, so the next step is to take these contact strips. And what you can see here from the truck, this is the rear truck. I know because it has a coupler, because the front truck has no coupler. You can see these copper brass stanchions coming up and when you look in here you can see the metal wheels contact them on wipers on the outside transmits the power up so the power gets transmitted up through this little slot here up to here and on there is where we have these guys. Now I've already prepared these. When you do prepare them I mark them left and right. That's because you need to put capped on tape on right here so that it's insulated from the motor leads. These motor leads can only touch here on the decoder. And you'll see there's a chance that they could touch on the outside of these as they come up. You don't want that. So you, um, you take capped on tape and you wrap it around so that outside is protected. This one, uh, and then I mark where I want the cap on tape. It's right there, although hard to see. And that's a left one. I'll install this one on the right first. I'm going to double check just to make sure in case I did something funny. Yep, I can see there's cap on tape wrapped around, so it's wrapped that way. Now, to get this in, first step is I need to bend this motor mount pretty much straight. And then 
I insert this into the front, swivel it over, and then always find out that the back doesn't quite fit in. Incidentally, these are pretty easy to fit in because there's a little nub here that goes into a little hole there. Anyways, as I was saying, I have to just do a gentle bend on these to get it underneath where it's supposed to slide in. It's not a permanent bend, it's just grab it and insert it into its little slot because it goes under, not over at the back. And then, using my bamboo skewer, rotate that in place, push down. Okay, so the strip is long enough that there's a tiny bit there and there's a tiny bit under there. So you just have to make sure that it's under here, not on top. And then this, because it's a tiny bit wider now, you have to press down to get it in. And you can see here the little gray nub is coming through the little hole. So that's properly seated. On this side, we'll do the same thing. Double check, yep, capped on the outside, yep, no problem. That. And we just start by inserting it there. And then a little place that's got to go over there. Okay. Now you can see how that's not properly seated there, so we'll spin it around because I'm right-handed. We'll grab this and we'll maneuver that in. Make sure the rear one's still in place. Press down with our fingers, get our little bamboo stick. sure everything's in. Yeah, I really like these. Well, I cut this one off to make a square end, but these are just bamboo skewers you pick up at a meat department. And I like them for soldering because they're wood. They don't trans. They're not going to stick to any solder. They don't transmit heat or anything else you need to worry about. Okay, so that's that guy in. Now, next step is to put the board in. And we just have to be careful because the these little contacts need to be up. And sliding it over this little gray clip there. And then it slides back like that. And that's the board in. And I just move those forward to where they're supposed to be. I'm not going to solder the board in yet. I'm going to leave that as a latter step. You will notice, however, this capacitor now goes all the way back, slides into the recess that I dremeled in the back here. Once I get everything in place, it does. Well, it doesn't quite fit. I got just a tiny, I got the, where I dremeled it out is a little too low. I can see it's just a tiny bit. So, board comes out, which just slides forward a little and then lifts out. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to have to dremel a little more, and I don't want any electronics around, so I'm going to go off and do that, and then come back once I've fixed that.